Uh, what are you saying then about who Adam was and when Adam was? And okay. how did you get there with, uh, with this, uh, this quest? It seems to me that one of the central truths taught by the primeval history, one among those 10 that I mentioned, is that the entire human race is descended from a primordial founding pair there actually was an original human couple right. from whom the entire human race is descended. Biblically speaking right now. Biblically right. speaking. Right. Yeah. That's right. Now, the question is, is that biblical commitment compatible with what modern science tells us about human origins? Or is the Christian left with an irreconcilable conflict between his biblical commitments and what modern scientific studies of human origins tell us. And in the second half of the book, I explored the field of paleoanthropology, which is the study of human origins. Right. And this part of the book was especially stunning yeah. and surprising to me. Uh, as a result of my study, I became convinced that Neanderthals are fully human persons. Uh, they are our cousins, they are members of the human family, and that therefore Adam and Eve, to be the universal progenitors of mankind, had to be chronologically prior, not just to Homo sapiens, but also to Neanderthals mm. as well. Yeah. And that would place Adam and Eve somewhere uh, around 750,000 years ago, and the stem ancestor for Neanderthals and Homo sapiens is typically identified as Homo heidelbergensis, right. or Heidelberg man. Uh -huh. This was a prehistoric man who had a brain capacity comparable to that of modern human beings, who exhibited cognitive behaviors that modern human beings do, and who was anatomically similar right. to modern human beings. And so I think it's very plausible that Adam and Eve uh, belong to this species called Homo heidelbergensis. Yeah. So uh, fascinating. Uh, did you expect to come to that conclusion about Neanderthals? And No, uh, yeah. this, was, this was quite shocking to me. Did and you have I, an opinion about Neanderthals before you... <sighs> I was aware vaguely that Neanderthals had buried their dead, that they didn't just leave their dead to decay or throw the bodies outside the cave to get rid of the stench, but that they carefully buried yeah. their dead. There are even some remains that suggest, however inconclusively, that they have, may have buried their dead on beds of flower petals. Oh, wow. And that displays to me a sensitivity that is distinctly human. Right. Um, and therefore, I thought, these don't look like beasts uh -huh. to me. Which these is kind like of the uh, 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 ongoing assumption that uh, Neanderthals are not like us, that they are more animalistic than yes. made in the image of God, which yes. is what you're suggesting. And, and what I discovered, Eric, as a result of my studies, is that the archaeological remains from Neanderthal culture so show that these people not only had a brain capacity that was even larger than Homo sapiens, <laughs> but that they exhibited cognitive behavior that included, I think, human language, foresight, symbolic thought, Right. Uh, the archaeological remains associated with Neanderthal, I think, leave no doubt that these were fully human persons. Wow. Um, and those are some of the human uh, qualities that you look for as far as criteria <laughs> to define humanity. Uh, you mentioned some of them before. Forethought, critical thinking, reasoning skills. Yes. Um, what are some of the Symbolic. others? Symbolic thought, uh, the ability to grasp abstract concepts, that would be especially important. And then technological advancement. Uh -huh. When you look at some of the tools that they were able to make, this is nothing like a chimpanzee sharpening a twig with his teeth to dig in a termite mount. Right. Uh, they constructed 
uh, tools that were exquisitely uh, carved that involved hafting of stone points onto wooden spears and other implements. Um, they were crafts, craftsmen, sure. not just beasts. Well, this seems to be one of the things, but I, I think maybe this is tops the list, that really sets your work and your hypothesis apart from what else is out there, uh, both in Christian work mm -hmm. around this and scientific. I mean, it seems to me a lot of the loudest voices in the Christian world tend to be some of the young earth voices yeah. or um, others that might want to place Adam after Neanderthals, uh, if they acknowledge Neanderthals at all. I mean, I, I've heard a lot of people just want to dismiss that as... Uh, yeah, that's true. Uh, well, I think those folks are unfortunately just ignorant yeah. of the fossil remains. But what I've actually found is that young earth creationists are very open and sometimes affirming of the humanity of Neanderthals. Yeah. They just think that they lived contemporaneously with Homo sapiens a few thousand years ago. Right, right, So right. it's the dating that they object to, but not the identification of Neanderthals as fully human persons. 